Hey, John, I know we had second breakfast, but I'm still really hungry. Don't worry, David. It's just about time for Elevensies. Oh, thank goodness. That sounds delicious. What's on the menu? We've got a special guest to talk about our second breakfast movie, Anna Claus, and we'll be talking about Falling for Christmas. And then we're going to have some rankings by our affiliates and lore friends, Brandon, Jean, Alicia, Anthony, and Marilyn R. Pukila. Sounds like we didn't have enough room in the kitchen for uh, both breakfasts, so we had to cut this podcast into two. There's just so much going on. There is. The uh, conversations with uh, our co-hosts, Brandon and Jean and Alicia and Anthony and Marilyn, some of them were great and they went kind of long. <laughs> and I think it would have been too much to stuff it all into the first yeah, breakfast. Yeah. So. It's a feast fit for Goldberry's kitchen table. All right, well, let's jump into the first top three rankings with Brandon. Brandon the Bard, good to see you. How are you since, well, we just recorded just a few days ago, so <laughs> this is the we most did. I've seen you, I think, all year. I know. Uh, yeah, we, we packed it all in right there at the end. I like to be, uh, you know, festive holiday man, and so I can make myself available around that time. I'm good. Yep. How about you, man? You've been We're doing good. All right? We're good. Yeah, all is well. John, unfortunately, can't join us this morning, uh, which is when we're recording. He's got uh, family duties as well. We were supposed Um, to do this earlier, peek behind the curtain, but I had a mandatory dad nap I had to take. You do not mess with the dad nap. That is extremely (laughs) important. Yeah, and you had gone to an ice festival thing, right? And so obviously you were completely exhausted by the fact that you were surrounded by a horde of screaming children. Oh, yeah. Disney on ice. We got to see that. Yeah. Our our oldest daughter was she had a blast. I cried. It was great. Awesome. Fabulous stuff. Well, last night we watched my uh, our daughter had a friend over and they watched the Eros tour the whole three hours of it. Hell yeah. So we made them popcorn. We get a big batch of uh, double mac and cheese. And then they had uh, my uh, my wife and daughter made some cupcakes and then they painted them to look like Taylor Swift on the top. You know, they put some icing on it. Okay. Blue eyes, red lipstick, brown bangs. They, they look more <laughs> like the Mr. Bill um, <laughs> <laughs> claymation figure than they did Taylor Swift, but it was really sweet. So. Sounds like a delightful evening that I'd actually love to have. They loved it. They had a great time. They were singing and dancing and jumping on the couch and the table and stuff. So. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Taylor Swift. She already won Time Person of the Year. We are here to talk about about her. But yeah, you your three top TV shows for the year. So, how was your year in television? I think we talked a little bit about this on the the Leave the World Behind podcast. You have not had a lot of freeboard in your viewing hours. Absolutely not. Uh, another peek behind the curtain. Uh, there's a baby right next to me and I'm feeding her blueberries so she won't yell while we're trying to do this. Um, so <laughs> most of the time, yell, it's, she's, <laughs> yeah. she's either giving you a thumbs up or a thumbs down on your on your top three picks. For sure. She's got some pretty strong opinions, as my media uh, will point out. But she uh, yeah, like most of the time these days, if I if I have the TV to myself, because I also have a five-year-old. I am uh, <laughs> trying to play a video game or something to just like, you know, just engage that part of my brain. Mm-hmm. So mo- I have not really consumed very much media in that I went over because we here at the Lorehounds, um, David has compiled like a giant list of all the TV that's been out that, you know, most of us are engaging with. I pointed out a couple. Well, no, just one. Th- that wasn't even last year. I think it was the year before with the Halo show. It uh-huh. wasn't on the list, but it's coming next year and I'm excited about it. Yeah, um, it's on the list. I've I, I've got a, a a blank entry for it, so I just have to go in and populate the details. Heck yeah! So, but I struggled really hard to come up with a top ten, and some of them are joke answers at best. Right, but, uh, <laughs> you had like Sesame Street and Bluey and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bluey is still my number one. Spoiler alert. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oops. We spilled <laughs> the beans. <laughs> now the tension will be what f- slotted in for three and two. Absolutely. Do you want me to just go into why Bluey is my number one? Sure, why not? We're there. Okay. Uh, it, it It is just straight up the best show I've ever seen for like, they first, they, okay, you're going to, you're going to find this sentiment across the internet as far as like parent culture with, you know, with, with children around my children's age. It's just like they nail it when it comes to 
that perfect balance of like family entertainment, you know, cringe is that that may sound, but like there's literally something for everybody. Like okay. the dad is so relatable. The mom is relatable. There are episodes that are just like about one of the earlier episodes is about like what the what it feels like to send your child to sleep by themselves without you. Mm. Uh, like the most recent season that came out, it's been out in Australia for a while, but it just came out this year. So it counts as yeah. this year's <laughs> entertainment. Uh, the most recent season that came out on Disney Plus had a uh, episode that was about the main character's aunt isn't able to have children. So she's always struggled with coming to visit her nieces because it makes her really heartbroken oh. to be around children when she can't have them herself. So right. like it's like it's like real shit in this cartoon. And the episode's called onesies because they, you know, the kids run around and the, one of them acts like, uh, like the the onesie that she's wearing. So she's a like a like a mean tiger the whole time. But okay. meanwhile, the the parents, the the adults in the show are struggling with this. So like, there's real stuff in there that you know the parents will sit there and be crying at the TV while the kids are laughing. So I mean, like, it's a it's it it's a it's a good show. Wow. <laughs> I know a lot of like adults who don't have children that also enjoy the show. But if you do have kids, you're missing out if you're if you're not watching Bluey. If the, if your kids will allow you to put that on the TV, I recommend it. It's on Disney Plus. We have completely missed the Bluey boat, and um, I don't. I, I wonder if uh, at eight uh, she would still be engaged with uh, the content. We'll Maybe Bluey's see. Bluey is seven, so she uh, okay. You know, and, and it's it's a smart show, so like it it doesn't talk down to children either. Right. That's one of the that's one of the good things about it. So I think older kids would like it, but I do have an example of probably like I think nine year olds that think it's for kids and they don't want to watch it they want right, to right they want to yeah. watch you know the grown-up kids on disney channel and like you know like the uh, you know if it were around i don't know exactly because my kids aren't you know that age but like all that or whatever <laughs> like from when i was a kid or keenan right. and kel like that kind of show right um that's what they're into now but who knows cool. man give it give it a whack if you can if you can get her to watch it then she might love it sounds good all right. Well, why don't we just uh, work our way down since we're at one? What's your number two? The Last of Us, easily the best. Like, got it. I cannot believe how good it was. Um, I we obviously uh, me and uh, John did a podcast on the game. Yeah. So I I got like uh a, like hmm, what would you call it? Just a concentrated dose of The Last of Us this year with playing the game for the first time and the TV show, and it's just so so good. Um. The cast crushes it. The, you know, I, I guess we can talk about the game. So, yeah, it's like the gold standard as far as like uh, a narrative game, uh, a great adaptation in general. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, they pick and chose the right things, except that the show had a little bit less clicker action than than most of the game players would have liked. I know, Lily, that's 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 right. Uh, but yeah, the, <laughs> uh, but yeah. What's not to say that it hasn't been said in many, many hours of podcasting by right. folks like you and and myself. Yeah. Uh, great show. I'm sure this is not a controversial pick. No. Uh, and and uh, when we reveal the community draft, uh, you will see where it lands. And it is very, very, very high. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah. And I think it ranks across uh, uh, John and I's quite high as well. I mean, it was every episode was a banger. There was not a dead episode I among the bunch. And as you said, the, the acting and the plot and the adaptation was all just spot on. Huge feels. It was a, a really emotionally big show. Yeah. I mean, the closest thing to a filler episode was one of the best episodes of television I've ever seen with, uh, <laughs> with, with Bill. And uh, I can't yeah, remember uh, his right. husband's name. But yeah. holy shit, what, a, what an episode. And also, like, that's one of the things that the rare improvements on the adaptation. Right. Like. It was good in the game, but like the, it just blew it out of the water on the show. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, what's your number three show? Uh, leave the world behind. Actually, um, oh well, well that's a movie though. So. That's true. We can click it down if you like. The number three show. Uh, we got to go way down the list. Uh, uh, uh. 
the next one, funny enough, is Sesame Street. Do we want to go Sesame Street or do <laughs> sure, we want to go? Not? Why the hell not? <laughs> uh, always. Which version of Sesame Street is this? So, s- Sesame. It, didn't they move to HBO? They did. Now Max, I think, is yep. the main place for them. So they've sort of changed format over the years. Uh, they almost lost their whole shirt for a while, which is very sad because much like me, even you, even probably hmm, my parents, Sesame Street has just always been there. Yep. So it's kind of neat to follow it through the years. Hooper's store is still there. He's just obviously not running it anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've changed to like a 30 minute thing. And it's kind of kind of sad because like they're doing a lot of stuff that works well on a tablet for a kid. So like, sure, short, right. Yeah, uh, you know, to the point they're not really as long episode long plots anymore. Right. Um, it's a lot of more, you know, stuff ki- the kids will look at and ignore. Oh, she's throwing the blueberries. We're almost done here. Well, we better wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But yeah. I-, I can actually go through the little list here because this is literally everything I watched. Okay. Uh, I loved Righteous Gemstones. I didn't get to watch the whole thing. It's a great show. And this season seemed to be good. Mando, I thought was pretty all right. Ahsoka is just narrowly edging out Sister Wives. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I, I super didn't enjoy Ahsoka, and maybe we can get into this later. I loved seeing uh, Hayden Zanakin again. That was great. I loved some of their choices there, but most of the Disney Star Wars choices I didn't like. Right. Yeah, so I guess we got a Bluey, we got a The Last of Us, and a Sesame Street. <laughs> <That's the top laughs> <three. laughs> that, yeah. that is your TV viewing for the year. Right. What, not, what a year it has been. Indeed. <laughs> well, what is your... Among that August list, uh, what is your quote unquote guilty pleasure show? What is the show that you would never rank, but you just enjoy the heck out of? Probably Sesame Street. But uh, Sister Wives is definitely the one that I didn't I even so. watch. It mm-hmm. was just on in the background and right. I would avoid the television when my wife was watching it. Same thing with 90 Day, honestly, which I know John's a big fan of. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, what is your biggest miss? Uh, I always feel like I miss the foundation. Uh, that's one that I uh, I know I'd love, and I just can't I can't get around to doing it. Obviously, with my my schedule and with my interests, there's several of these shows that uh, I'd love to get to, but I never do. Mm-hmm. But Foundation is just the one that's like, man, this is so like pitched right at me, and I'm just not watching it. Got it. Yeah, no, that's a that's a solid big miss for you for sure. Yeah. I think you would you would really dig it. And what is your most anticipated show? And it, again, it doesn't have to be for next year. It can be any time. Like, what is the thing that you're really excited for it to eventually return? I definitely have sort of a top three on here, but like mm-hmm. realistically, The Last of Us, I want to okay. see season two really bad. Halo, it's awful. It is <laughs> dog That's shit your guilty pleasure for television. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But, uh, you know, I just want to, I want to see what you want to be in the world, do. right? You want to yeah, hang I out want- and you want to see the armor, you want to see the aliens and all that stuff. Yeah. And I just want to be covered in the shit show that they're going to do. Like, it's just going to be <laughs> awful and I want to bask in it. Nice. And then uh, obviously House of the Dragon, like, God damn. Yeah. It's going to be great. Can't wait. I to think see this year's going to be quote unquote fire. I know. Absolutely. And, you know, fire and blood. Yep. Uh, hopefully. Amazing. Brandon, well, thanks so very much for dropping in here and balancing uh, a microphone in one hand and a bottle in the other. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you. your schedule, your life schedule will open up a little bit this next year. So we'll get you on the mic a bit more, but really great to have you in the our podcasting community. You were our first actual official co-host because that's John wild. Wanted you, yeah. Wanted to do the game thing. I definitely am the co-host probably with the least amount of t- airtime. <laughs> yeah, I was just doing the I was just doing some accounting and you have the least amount of appearances. Well, there's I think Moses overall with one piece, but that's specifically just for a very niche show. So For sure. And we got something in the can, but that's going to be coming eventually, but yeah, like uh we we got some we got some irons in the fire. We're going to yeah. be recording more hopefully. Yeah, this one lets me go a little bit longer and record more things but I, I had a lot of fun recording the other day doing um the one shot for the leave the world behind i love that so looking forward to doing more with you guys in the new year it's gonna be absolutely gonna be i just saw godzilla last night godzilla minus <sighs> one so so jealous was it good uh it was <laughs> it was interesting in in a lot of different well we need to talk about we need a podcast to talk about it so that's true that's true. if you get around yeah. to seeing it we can do a one shot for it i would love to do that i might i might be able to sneak away from my house for a little while sounds good 
Brandon, thanks so very much. Have a great rest of your holidays, and we look forward to seeing you more on the mic in 2024. Thanks a lot. You too, man. John, welcome. Thank you for jumping on with us. How you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, absolutely. How's your TV year been? What are you? How are you feeling about the year in in visual content? I'm pretty happy with 2023. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. I think 2023 was a pretty good year, aside from one major uh, <laughs> pickup that yeah. we won't ever talk about. But no. You know, we don't talk about named. that show, but, um, yeah, 2023 was, was a good year for me. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed most of the things that I watched uh-huh. and, um, yeah. Good. That's awesome. It's been a weird back half of the year for some reason with releases, not even necessarily strike related, just, you know, there's there, I just felt like there was a whole bunch of shows that got rushed out at the end and yeah, it was, I think so. Weird. I think so. I think, but on the whole, the yeah. things that I actually sat down and watched, and I I like. You know, there's nice. not there are not a lot of big complaints for me. Excellent, for excellent. Why don't we just jump right in? And what is your number three for the year? That would be Snowfall, the final season. Snowfall. God, I've never yeah. heard of this in my life. You'll have to pitch it to me. <laughs> What's so the pitch? Snow, Snowfall tells the story of a young drug dealer coming up in. L.A. in the 80s at the inception of crack cocaine, uh, oh, working I with remember um, hearing about this, working with the CIA agent and, you know, nefarious South American, Central American um, drug cartels and his slow descent into madness. Basically, this was probably one of my top crime stories that I've watched on TV. Mm-hmm. And this last season, you know, Franklin, that's the main character's name. He was totally, um, it was engaging to watch him become the thing that he said that even though he was dealing drugs and he knew what he was doing, the way it ended, it was not pretty. And to watch him descent into that madness was really great. It was really great. So what was this was a this is an a Hulu show FX on Hulu. Yes, on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. They're doing pretty so, well with that. Like I, every time I see that branding, I go, "Huh, that might be good." Right. FX right. is like a mini HBO. Yeah. But they yeah, got you so. know the Bear. They've got Fargo, yeah. and now this. So I'm saying, and I then and then Hulu is a is a solid streamer. So you know it's yeah. a yeah. platform. Yeah. Well, now they're merging it into Disney, so we'll see right, how that goes. Right, it's gonna be goes. a tile on Disney, which should it should be a, a benefit to Disney, not the other way around. Not the other way around, definitely. Yeah, and then, you well, know, we'll, we'll um, see because it's it's complicated. I don't want to talk about that right now. Let's <laughs> let's talk about what you like, Jean. Yes, and 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 damn some Idris, who's the the protagonist. Um, he, yeah, it, it, it's just a, a a really nice look at the entire scene and they got it down so so pat like i'm not from la but i know you know how the 80s played out across the inner cities in this country and they they just really did a a great a great job at just the overall feel the grittiness the you know characters the costuming everything was so on point just really huh. a great 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 watch for me trying to find on, some, go ahead i was just gonna say i'm gonna put this on my deep background watch list you know things that i i know i should watch at some point yeah and i'm probably gonna re-watch the entire series sometime in 24 right on <laughs> so yeah but it was really, really good i was really happy with that and um yeah so snowfall takes number three for me nice okay cool all right, uh, what's your number two? That would be Loki. No, oh, um, that's a yeah. big rank. Yeah, that would be Loki. That would be I. I absolutely love the the season. I, uh-huh. There's, you know, we we went in depth uh, uh, on it. Um, you you heard me every week. You just laud the the program, the show. I just really, I thought it it did everything that it needed to do, and it uh-huh. did everything that I wanted it to do. Nice. 
So if it gives me that, then, you know, I can't complain much about it. And the acting, of course, was A1, but just the overall cohesion in the story and how they ended it and how we got to the end, I felt was really, really well done. So Loki is number two for me. Yeah. Wow. No spoilers yet because uh, we're still working out the editing for the top 10 community ranking, but I will say that Loki ended up pretty high. Mm. In the rankings, it's okay. it's solid okay. in the top ten. So wow, okay, okay. yeah. I could John see why. just uh, caught up to it. If John, famously not an MCU mm-hmm. fan, Person. you uh, <laughs> you caught up with it, and you I think you enjoyed it. It's on my rankings. I won't tell you where. Oh wow, okay. But it's on that's, my rankings, which I didn't big. expect. That's big. I didn't expect it to be on your. That's game. huge, John. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is an accomplishment for it an is. MCU show to make it up to my r- radar. Yeah, yeah, and the feels in the last segment as Loki's ascending were just ah so sublime, visually beautiful. The music, the emotions, the journey that he went on—it was really, really something special. I don't think there's nothing quite, especially within the comic book frame, there's nothing that has quite hit that same way. So, and you know the way that you just said that, it's like for both of those for Snowfall. And for Loki, like the final shots, the final mm-hmm. right as it as the shows are ending, was so captivating for me. Just really encapsulated a lot of feels and a lot of emotion uh, for different reasons for each of those shows. Nice. But it just is, I think, really good storytelling when it ends, and you're like, "Fuck! Oh shit!" <laughs> right. Like, yeah, just good stuff. Good right. stuff. It's the spot. Right on. Cool. Okay, what's your number one show for 2023? My number one show, The Last of Us. Oh, boom. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. You just couldn't miss. I never played the game. They, they didn't miss. I never played the game. They, yeah, that was just. It was a great show. <sighs> Every episode, Man. there was not a, uh, a dog in it. There, Every there was. One. I will say not I, flawless in my opinion, but it was very, very, flawless? very, very okay. good. If it's not for me, it was close to flawless. If I don't know if anything can be flawless, mm-hmm. but oh, yeah, for me, it yeah, was yeah. pretty, pretty much that. Like that was, you know, appointment viewing. Right. You know, right. you know like we used to have this. back in the days when we were, you know, I got a pencil in, I got to mm-hmm. sit at, you know, at, at eight o'clock at night and just be there to watch it because I know, you know, as soon as it's over, I'm running outside to talk to my friends about it. <laughs> that's how, that's how the last of us had me because each episode I felt like I need to call somebody <laughs> and talk <laughs> about what about I just watched. Right. You know so what I mean? You didn't play the video game, right? Before? I didn't play the video game. Okay. I didn't, I never played the video games. Um, all, most of my friends have, I'm the only, you know, person mm-hmm. who has an Xbox about my my group of friends <laughs> who, who are gamers. I, I know you have an Xbox as well, John. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't have a, a PlayStation, so I never played it. And they've always, you know, talked about the the game. So I I knew that it was a really great game, right? Mm-hmm. But just watching it, man, man, just it, it it was an amazing show. It was an amazing show. It was great. I think I think I honestly judged it a little more harshly because I had played the video game and it felt. Oh wow! Like okay, you have to really wow me with the show and the changes you're making to give me the same emotional effect I had when I first see you know the twist at the end, right? I don't. Right. In case anybody hasn't seen it, I won't spoil that. But like that last episode has such a an emotionally gut wrenching twist, and I right. It of course loses some impact if you already know what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That I can see. I can definitely see that. But I don't know. I just I just felt like they hit everything on on the head. There was not mm-hmm. a, a hiccup. There was not a misstep for me. And it, again, it, it, it just felt like appointment viewing. You yeah. know, I, I, oh. yeah. Season two seems like it's going to be great. I'm, I'm really looking forward to all of it. Excited think- for it. Definitely. Did, wasn't there some news about them starting uh, starting up uh, filming again? Yeah, quick? I think there. There's been rumors of they finally cast one of the main characters that only shows up in two. Okay, so we'll see. 
All right. Yeah. Awesome. So hopefully 2025 or yeah, 2025 we'll 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 be back. That's the thing about these big heavy hitter shows, especially if they've got big name stars. We don't get our annual thing. We gotta yeah. wait like two or three years for next seasons. Yeah, well the nice thing with The Last of Us is it's a short enough property that they have. There's only two games that they could wrap it up within like three seasons and it would right. feel mm. not, you know, rushed. Right. That's good. Cool. Well, that's a that's a heavy heavy hitting list there, uh, Jean, with some yeah, uh, shows with some big emotional punch to them. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely, definitely. What Jean is- likes to cry. That's what I learned today. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, a man with an emotional side to him. What yeah. is your quote unquote guilty pleasure show? What is a show that wouldn't necessarily rank, but uh, you you enjoyed the heck out of nonetheless? The Witcher. <laughs> nice i love it how no, was uh was it season two this year no man we like on season four i think of the witcher yeah it's like Dang. three seasons in already yeah. that's crazy yeah. how was the season what did you think it was so cheesy but i loved it yeah <laughs> I lo- <laughs> is you it know, still I'm, henry cavill I, yes uh, this was his last Okay. This season was his final um, go round as Geralt, but um, yeah, I, I it was. It doesn't compare to the top three <laughs> that I know, right? Made, yeah, right? that's why this is doesn't, the quote unquote guilty pleasure. Yeah, it doesn't uh, compare yeah, to those, right. but it was just fun watching. Nice. It, it was, it, you know, I wasn't into the story. You know, I, I've played the game, mm-hmm. so um, I haven't read the books, unfortunately. Um, but it was just, you know, turn it on and, and zone out. And I, right. and I appreciated it for that. Right. Right. So I. I Some I, goofy entertainment. I, yeah. Goofy inter- entertainment. And I got to see, you know, a uh, live action girl out, which is, you know, so cool because I, you know, I've played the games. Sure. So right on. that's, that's why it, it's my guilty pleasure. Mm. Good stuff. And what was your biggest miss? The bear. Mm. Haven't caught gotta up. Gotta do it. I got. Oh, I know. Man. I know. I know. Did you watch season one? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah. You're in yeah. for a treat. Yeah, I haven't done I think, it. I think season oh. two is better, and it that's is. Hard wow. Sure so it's wow. way better. Wow. Okay. And that's the thing about okay. a show like that is, is that wait, how do you how do you come off a season one like that and up do it. a season two even better, and they deliver. You know, huh. it's, it's it's truly extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm going to catch up hopefully over the holidays, the next few weeks, early in 2024. I'll rectify that, that mess. And what is your biggest anticipated returning show? And again, it can be anything, We you know, it could be even something that's a couple of years out. Daredevil. Ah, the new one. Yeah, the new Daredevil. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's, because I think it's going to, I I enjoy those Netflix, uh, the Netflix Marvel shows. What did they call and, it? The Defenderverse? Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know why they call it because that Defender uh, ensemble show was terrible. That's but, it, was. <laughs> it was. Yeah. I watched most of all those and Luke Cage was great. The early Daredevil was great. Yeah. And uh, Jessica, Jessica Jones, Jones. Was great. Then they had Defenders and Iron, Iron Fist, Fist were Not, horrible. Yes. Horrible. Yes. yes. Terrible. I'm, I'm excited to see Charlie Cox back as, as our hero. Yeah. And I want to see where they, where they take it, bringing those characters or that character right now into the MCU main, um, which Did is you something. you hear about in the Spider-Man video game, John? They in in the first one, I think it was they had evicted on their office in the Spider-Man video game. I did and now not. In the second one, they had they took the sign down. So now Get it just, it just has Nelson and Mullins. Oh wow! Um, or that's Nelson great. Murdoch, that's, sorry, that's really cool. That's yeah. oh man, that's awesome. That is awesome. I did not know that. So I think wow. I think they're hinting that they're bringing it back. Yeah, that they're bringing them back. That's really cool. That's great. So yeah, I'm 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 waiting for that. I, I I want those characters, and I'm hoping that Daredevil does well enough that we get these other characters as well from the the Netflix um, 
Marvel shows. That'd be right. great. Bring back David Tennant as Kilgrave. I'll be happy. Yeah, man. Come on. We got to get more purple, man. Got to get. Got to do it. Got to do great it. Great villain. I'll watch him in anything. So yeah, just any excuse to have him on screen. Yeah, definitely. So, um, and you and Alicia are still in the kitchen cooking. We're waiting yeah, to see what yeah. you guys so are going to serve up. So we're gonna we're gonna be doing some Marvel DC things in in 2024. You know, comic book superhero comparisons um, loosely, right. and you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we talk a little bit more about it amongst that's right. ourselves. Um, so that's going to be great to 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 have on our plate and and to look out for in 2024. Yeah. Well, Jean, thank you so much for all that you've contributed this last year. And it's really great to have you in the corner of that with uh, comics and um, video games as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's just been a, a great fun. It's fun to assemble our little team here. And it's absolutely uh, really, oh, yeah. really loved having you on the pod. So it's been, an, it's been uh, a great thing for me. I get to talk about all these things that I love. And, right? and do it with people that are really cool. So this is this is awesome. Glad to have you part of the the lore fam. Ah, uh, so, I don't know lore don't fam. Know I'm, going I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm uh, gonna use that lore fam. I'm use Hashtag that. lore fam. Lore fam. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> it yeah. works. It I works. think so. I think so. I tried. Yeah, you you've got more more. You succeed more often than you fail, John. That's, that's, but we, I just throw shit out and it, it sticks. I know, but I'm still waiting for. <laughs> if you a new say song, enough things. So. Some of something's gonna work. That's how I feel. <laughs> thank you guys All right, Jean. thank you have a great holidays and uh, we'll be out with you soon alright everybody be well Alicia thanks for dropping in how you doing doing well I uh, just finished wrapping up the uh, Doctor Who episode that was a fun one to discuss it was oh cool yeah uh, and uh, you have we have a special guest for that episode as well yeah, yeah, my uh, who mentor Simon. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> he's, he grew up with. Uh, he's from the UK. He's from England. He grew up with the whole culture of who. So it's Excellent. a different perspective than we have. Well, fingers crossed. The new season will be, uh, and with the new Doctor, will be fun and exciting, and you guys will get to do some coverage on it. Yeah, yeah, off to a promising start. Speaking of coverage, our top three for the end of the year. How was your? TV year overall, did you feel like you had a good year in uh, in what we got delivered to us via the I interwebs? Mean, honestly, the amount of quality content's been overwhelming. Like last year, 2022, uh, my top three, easy peasy, it was um, Severance, Andor, and, uh, and um, Interview with the Vampire. So anyone okay. who hasn't watched those, watch those immediately. But this year, <laughs> I've really been... I have an obvious top two, which I think most people who know me can predict. And okay. then I've really been struggling with the rest of the list. So like I said, I changed it just before we got on. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's start with your top three. What is your number three show for 2023? Oh, we're starting with number three. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, one. otherwise this podcast <laughs> yeah, would be okay. for like four hours long. No, no, no. I, I meant uh, rather than counting down to three because... Uh, the three is the one that I struggle with the most. You have to build suspense. That's yeah, right. yeah, fair enough. But uh, doesn't everyone know what I'm going to say for number one? But okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a bet. I'd take that bet. Uh, for number three, ooh, we're going to land on The Last of Us. Ooh, okay, okay. Heart, okay. Right? All right. That was, that was tough. Like, uh, apologies to the fall of House of Usher, Gilded Age, Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it, when you of the five level, it really does become a battle of millimeters. Yeah. And it's also like, what 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 parameters am I judging on, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's why I had to develop a whole schematic thing for myself to try to resolve those conflicts. Right. So Last of Us, that was, uh, it was, it was a really, every, I, it, it really ranks solid in the community draft and uh, we'll reveal the, the final when we do, but it's, um, yeah, it was a really good season. It was solid. Yeah, just individual episodes and overarching story. And yes, I am a fan of the video game, so that could play a role too. Yeah, John. And a fan of the cast. Yeah. John was, when it was coming up and we were deciding on, on what we were going to do, you were, John, you were very excited when we decided yes. to make the decision. Pro, pro The Last of Us for sure. Yeah. Um, and then Brandon and I even covered the video game because we were trying to keep the train going. And hopefully we'll get a great season too. I'm really looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. All right. What is your n top two? 
Or so number two yeah. is uh, Silo. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I mean, it was genuinely, of course, I have a bias. And I think that I rank anything that I cover in depth a little bit higher in most cases other than the show that shall by not be named. <laughs> um, but just when you, you know, when you're covering something like this, you're looking at it more closely and also being yeah. a fan of the source material. But I just appreciate the level of uh, balance of mystery box and excitement and character building and drama and world They really building. built an amazing world visually mm-hmm. and character wise. Yeah, for sure. Yes. John, you were a pretty big fan of that. I really liked Silo a lot. I, uh, it's on my list. It's on my list. It's, okay. it's, uh, we have the placement revealed has yet. been tough. Right. The placement <laughs> has been tough, but, uh, it's a it's tough year. There. Yeah, it is. That's fair. Yeah. All right, Alicia, this is it. Your number one top show for 2023 is, uh, I feel like we could all say it at the same time. It's, the Wheel of Time. time. <laughs> <laughs> John's yeah. probably just there smirking. <laughs> I, I, yes, uh, yes, I am. I am. I, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. I, I will not reveal what's going right. on with that on my on my side, but I, it's it was very much an enjoyable season. It was a big improvement over season one, so I can see why you put it there. I also like season one, but um, again, it comes down to this is just a, a world that I am – even more than Silo, um, it, this is a world that I uh, love, that I have spent a lot of time in mentally. And for me, the way that they've brought it to life has been very satisfying. Also adding new elements to it uh, that I enjoy that make it more exciting for me even. Yeah, and the writing this season, there's just there's just some beautiful, heart-wrenching, and sometimes even funny writing. So Yeah, yeah. it's true. Good. Awesome. Is, do you think um, Wheel of Time is your most favored IP of all the IP worlds that you're living in? Well, you you asked me a similar question before, Did and I? I've been th- I've been thinking about it since, and um, I think the answer is yes. Like okay. I think you know, I also Star Wars and Marvel are also yeah. up there, but I have yeah. to say I probably spend more of my free time living in the Wheel of Time universe in my head than any other. Nice. So. Okay. Great. Well, it's great that we have a super fan in our, our ranks. So <laughs> yeah. Great. yeah, I think the White Tower segment with you and John were, I didn't listen to them, but I was really glad that we had those as a, mm-hmm. yeah, as it was a cool. part of it was our great. podcast. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and Alicia, you saved me from diving quite as deep as I would have to either. <laughs> because I, I already have to keep so much Tolkien lore in my right. brain. I don't yeah. know if I could handle always having everything Jordan in my brain at the same time. Yeah, no, exactly. There's, I, I've decided there's um, three massive universes that I will attempt to shove this much knowledge in and then be oh, actually, that's not even true because Dune's in there. T- oh, I don't know. No, <laughs> my, no, brain's no. A, my brain's <laughs> a, a messy place. <laughs> my brain's like the TARDIS with different rooms for different yeah. <laughs> IPs. Yeah. yeah, it has to be, right? Yeah. Don't, don't go into Dr. Donna territory where you can't store it in your brain. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Okay, so this is your uh, chance for your quote unquote guilty pleasure. We um, we were admonished to say that you know pleasure shouldn't be guiltified in in that way. But what is a show oh, no. that was? I'm ashamed of this. I'm ashamed. Oh, of you're this ashamed. One, <laughs> <laughs> but there's I rarely make time to watch um, like reality crap reality. You uh-huh. know. Romance I think John, what is yours? Shows? It's the ninety the, day fiance. That's it. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I watched. I still haven't watched that one. Yeah, uh, but I watched. There was a new one on Amazon called Twin Love, and it's where they have <laughs> the there's identical alone. twins, and then they put them in separate houses, and then see like let them date and see how they if they date the same people and stuff, and then they are eliminated, and it ends up breaking up couples. And I watched this entire season in about two or three days. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> it's not a good show. It's not. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> it's a fun show, though. I mean, it's, sometimes we just need that pure base entertainment, right? Yeah. So, it's good. really okay. Just enjoy yourself. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. And what was your biggest miss for the year? Oh, that's another really tough question because there are so many. It was such yeah, a packed year. There could be, I've got like two or three in my category. Yeah. So. I think I ultimately settled on Hotel V just because I feel like I can't Gen even v watch. Or Hotel v? Sorry, sorry. Jo- Gen, Gen v. v. Sorry, got sorry. It. Welcome to the Hotel <laughs> yeah. California. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can't even dive into the new uh, boys trailers yet because I haven't caught up on Hotel uh, Sorry, Gen V. 
And I think the new boys season is going to pick up where Gen Z yep. left off, right? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. And I hear it's quite good. So I really need to do that. And yeah, Blue Eyed Samurai and a bunch of other things and Queen Charlotte. And yep. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. It was, a, there was a lot. And they pushed a lot right at the end of the year. It was a mm-hmm. bit, of a, yeah. bit of a mess. Cool. And your, wait, is your number one show the same as your most anticipated return? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a hard guess. Yeah. No, is there anything besides wait. that, obviously? Is there anything else that would uh, fit in as a, a slightly lower tier for your most mo- anticipated? Most anticipated non-Wheel of Time return? Yes. Well, then Silo. I mean, Silo season two. Okay. More than Andor? Yeah. Um, ooh. Yeah. You yes. can have a double. You can have a double truck there. You can. I think. Well, I think more than Andor. Well, because then it's like I would actually rank Interview with a Vampire above Andor, and maybe that's Whoa, what I should say. Heresy. Oh no, it's a really good show. If anyone anyone who watches it, the writing is just spectacular. Really? Yeah, it yeah, is. You were, you've been talking it up for a while. It's a really good show. Um, so I'm I and they've been teasing also the next season because it's also another one of those things where like I don't know quite what they're changing from the books. It's a lot of fun to speculate. Right, right. So and it's now, not a yeah. it's not the books. It's not the um and they've Rice definitely novels. they've made I mean it it is and it isn't. Like Okay. The like slider the moves more towards inspiration. No, 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 no. I wouldn't okay. say that. I wouldn't say oh, that. Really? There there are some significant changes made, but it's okay. very much an adaptation. Okay. That's cool. Great. Well, Alicia, thanks so much for dropping in. Thank you so much for being such a vibrant and exciting part of our community. We are so pleased to have you with us, and we're really looking forward to an exciting 2023. John, any final words for Alicia? The wheel weaves, and looking forward to uh, <laughs> chatting with you about season three. Hopefully, we get it next year. Be with we've, you. Uh, I think they've they've filmed it already, right? Well, yeah, it's almost, uh, last I heard it was about to be done. They were just filming some last things in okay. uh, the waste, <clears throat> South Africa. I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you Fair imagine uh, rings of power, house of the dragon and wheel of time all in 2024? God, wow. that's, that, <laughs> that would be intense. Fantasy so TV is back. That's right. TV is back, baby. Fantasy TV, especially too. Yeah, for sure. All right, Alicia, thanks so much. Any final words for the the listeners? I just hope that you guys all have a great holiday season. And it's been so nice to share my passions with you all. And I can't wait to do that again in 2024. Anthony, thanks for joining us for this year end wrap up and your top three. How are, how are you? How are, how has your TV year been? Well, it's always a pleasure. I I've really enjoyed a few shows and um trying to get caught up on a few things that I've heard are are decent watches. Right. And, and we're recording uh, this in sort of earliest December, so there's still some late uh late entries trying to run for the the finish line here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I I for my the things that if I was just gonna settle in and enjoy something on my my own, it would probably be an old movie. Mm-hmm. Uh but on saying that, there still has been some t- television this year that I've really, really enjoyed. I was thinking about this today when I was looking at your email with your picks and stuff. Are you are you a TV hobbyist? I, I don't know this about you. Are you somebody who like TV is a thing for you or are you very selective and are looking at the quality of the show? I mean, and of course we're all lucky in that we get to podcast because we want to podcast. Mm-hmm. And so i see some of your picks are, are definitely related to that, but like, are you a hobbyist around television? I mean, I never used to be, and I would, I would have never said that about myself. I think I film has always been kind of the thing that I ha- I most loved. And then gotcha. about, I would say about 15 years ago, there was a major shift. And I, so I, I felt like at that time, I I don't know when to pinpoint it, you know, somewhere between the wire and game of Thrones, Mm -hmm. there was this shift where the best writing and the best acting you would see on a scripted TV series. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and there was a little bit of a fall off at the the movie theaters. Now it's kind of like a it's kind of like a crapshoot. Like you you could 
you could easily see something like Oppenheimer and be blown away. No pun intended. And, <laughs> but you know, but then you could also, you know, run into something like Chernobyl and be blown away. Totally. Definitely pun intended that time. So, yeah, I, I guess I was never really a TV guy much until more recently. And now there, there are certain things that I, there are certain shows that I love as much as any movie that I've ever seen. I mean, certainly in the days of the, uh, what was the, was it Thursday nights when you had like Cheers and Cosby and, yeah, and that right. whole thing? And those were really ephemeral shows, you know, 20 plus episodes. They had that traditional model where the summers were off and the reruns and oh, stuff. Oh, absolutely. Well, there was that, that I mean, that, that that is such a great point. Thursday nights were a thing. A thing. Because there was maybe three good shows on television. <laughs> there were only three that were worth watching. They were they were all put together on Thursday night. And then, you know, you had to wait till Saturday Night Live uh, right. before something else was, that was worth watching. Mm-hmm. So now it's sort of like... And, you know, f- Friday nights you're waiting for... Or Fridays you're waiting for Apple to come out with theirs or... Or, uh, you know, Sundays, you're waiting for HBO. HBO. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly think we had a, a lot of interesting TV this year. I We're doing this community ranking, right? So uh, Patreon subscribers can uh, fill out a form with their top 10. And we're going to do uh, some of our data-driven members are going to uh, put the data together. And we'll be able to get a sort of a community survey of the TV. And I was looking at some of the responses. And from 10... To about five, it's all over the place, all mm-hmm. over the place. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. five to three, it it narrows down, but still there are just wild cards uh, of mm-hmm. things coming out of there. Mm-hmm. And then one and two, I, around two, two has the most cohesion. And then one again scatters off again. It, <laughs> now I want to know. I haven't a, seen the data. <laughs> you can look. It's on the Google That's Drive. interesting. Uh, so it's been a really weird year of TV, not in, you know, uh, coming out of the pandemic, I guess, and obviously with the strike and, and stuff. So, but we still got a lot of good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, let's touch off with your top three television shows for 2023. What's your, do you have a number three here? I see what you wrote in your email, but I don't see them ranked. Does it I matter do, for I you? I think that, I think, yeah, I think that the third overall pick is The Gold. I don't know Aha. if you're familiar with The Gold. Oh, I am familiar with The Gold. Love The Gold. Used to Loved live it. in England. Did not live in the e- England in the early 80s when this is set. Mm-hmm. But this is based on a real world bank heist. Yep. And um, it's an ensemble cast. You might not, listeners may not recognize a lot of the actors, but the patriarch from Downton Abbey is a is a Hugh Bonneville. Chief- yeah, that's right. Yep. So he's in it, and a um, lot of you know Brits monologuing about how England is you know based on a class system, right? And uh, I I love it. Ate, ate it up. Just uh, one of the best uh, shows that come out of Britain in a long time. In for my money, anyway. It is on my top ten. I will say that. Excellent. Ooh. Excellent. John, have you seen The Gold yet? I have not. Not at all. I think David pitched it to me, and I just haven't gotten around to it. I've been binging Doctor Who. I'm, I'm putting it on me. It's my sure. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. <laughs> and this would, be, this would definitely fall into like a prestige kind of thing rather than mm-hmm. a little, you know, not, not campy, try, trying to be pretty realistic, although it does lapse into a, you know, center stage monologue sometimes you know if if you've ever had any kind of affinity with british culture this is a a a really fun show to watch well well, you heard the last thing i said right i'm binging doctor who so i think (laughs) i think i'd like it i think i'd like it sure well we'll have to talk another time about uh the uk because i also lived in the uk for a number of years and oh you did where were you at there i was in london uh, in a couple okay. of different places in London. So yeah, so. we did. We experienced the two the two different Englands. I was in Durham, so your your experience in London was night and day from my experience in the coal the the, the vacant coal mines of Durham, mm. England. Mm. Um, 
So number two, or the number two on my list, are you ready for that? Yes. I'm ready. All right. Uh, this, this of course, is, uh, is going to be on everyone's top three. This is The Bear. Absolutely uh, amazing show. I just I honestly didn't think that season two would be better than season one. And I think maybe it wasn't. Maybe season one was better, but the Christmas episode with <laughs> the dish of the seven fishes. Oh, what a, what an amazing! I, I I literally watched that episode three times, and my wife was like, "How can you watch that again? Mm-hmm. It's it's such it's a, so good. It's 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 so tense, but there's just so many really funny moments and." It's just a tour de force in filmmaking. Yeah. I feel like that that hour of television is, is as good as anything I saw in a theater over the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And then when you wrap it with the other episodes about the side plots of the characters, yeah. and when uh, I forget what's his name goes to Copenhagen and stuff like that, the those epi- some of those episodes are so sublime. Yeah. And, and just in these quiet moments and and – these evolutions of Carmi's characters and stuff. And then you have that cacophony that is the Christmas episode, Mm -hmm. but it's exquisite in its design and its execution. Yeah. There's so much, so many of these emotional threads are leading to that episode. And then Mm -hmm. that episode kind of circles back and explains why so many people in this family are messed up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I, I think that episode and just, the overall structure of this season made it mm-hmm. stronger than season one for me. I mean, season one, I, I really liked, but it, I had a false start on it. Like I, I had to come back mm-hmm. to it and restart it. And uh, it, it didn't make me want to rush to the end. Season two, I was in a marathon towards the mm-hmm. end because I was just like, this is the best TV I've seen all year, pretty much. Yeah. Now, John, you are Italian. Did you, was your, did you have a big family, big Italian family? Well, yes, but my holidays were all with my Irish side of the family where nobody talks. Uh, <laughs> so you were you were quietly suffering and reading poetry and whatnot? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> well, I I'm one of six children, a big Italian family, lots of aunts and uncles and cousins and people who not related to us at all. And uh, it was always it was always chaos. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the bear was not my number two. Great. Number one Here on my is. list is Reservation Dogs. Nice. Very and nice. this is this show is maybe in my top five shows of all time. And it's not a it, it, it's not a show for everyone. It's kind of an acquired taste. It's not like. Um, it's not like a sitcom where you everyone knows where the laugh lines are. It's like you kind of have to th- fall in love with the character and know that a situation or a particular person is funny. Um, but very creative storytelling, um, a bit of surrealistic uh, casting, and you know there, there there are dream elements in this film that are crucial to the plot and. Uh, I don't know. It's it's unlike any comedy I've ever seen on television. And I just fell in love with the characters in the show. Yeah. John, have you um, watched any Reservation Dogs? I don't even really know what it is. Like, I've heard of the name. Right. I, yeah. I don't know what it is at all. Do you Hulu at all? I I do Hulu. I, I bared and I. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I would I, say, I, I would say, you know, if, if, you kind of like quirky comedies. I would say give it three episodes or whatever. But um, I, I, you know, if you don't like it, then just <laughs> all right. To ever all think right. about it again. I do like quirky comedy. I like, but you if know, you Arrested like development, Thirty Rock, things like yeah, that. Yeah, so. yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. For me, it's on my biggest miss. I have not watched. A, I, I think it, my spouse and I watched episode one, season one, when it came out. Yeah, and then we just kind of never got back around into it and I keep the the season, the year will go by and I'm like, oh mm. dang, I didn't watch Reservation Dogs. And then it was like, oh, and then I heard this season was phenomenal and that they really landed the plane on this one and it was just a, a gorgeous show. And I feel like I need to be in the space for it. Right. In the same way that the bear had like one standout episode, there is a I think a standout episode 
in in mm. this latest season. And you'll know yeah. it when you see it because it's like you'll be mm. blown away and you'll be like, uh, that's certainly standing out from the rest. Um, anyway, uh, lo- loved it. Two two big bits of cinematic art coming out of Oklahoma this year, both Killers of the Flower Moon and, and Oh, Red true. Dogs. Yeah. Very good point. Great. That's a good list. That's a good, nice little top three. Thank you. I, I like the yeah. gold is, is, is that the gold made it onto there. Yeah. I love the so, gold. Love the it's gold. It's so good. Uh, okay. So we have our three bonus questions. What was your guilty pleasure show for the year? So I don't feel guilty about this at all. However, Excellent. <laughs> um, I, I do not ever miss an episode of the great British bake off. My mm-hmm. wife and I watch this every Friday night. Uh, Netflix does sometimes just release one episode a week, and it's great. And I wish that they would do that for <laughs> other <laughs> series. Like that's Stranger true. Things. That's right. Great British Bake Off. They do that. That's yep. true. And yep. so I, I just, I just love so much mm. all of the little nuances of British disappointment. You know, all the, all the little subtle burns, all, you know, th- like the highs are like, if someone bakes something really well, they get a handshake. It's just all so understated. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you've ever lived in England, you kind of like pick up on like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love it for the personalities, but then it's also kind of cool to see like, these guys are amateur bakers and they're pulling off some really amazing feats of confectionery. So confectionery, confectionery, confectionery. Yeah. Confectionery. Have you checked out the, the kids series at all? I haven't. And I kind of feel like it's a, like, it's a little bit like, like a brownie or a, a cupcake. It's like, it's I'll super, I'll maybe yeah. one a week. Mm-hmm. A little bit too much of a sweet tooth thing if, mm-hmm. I, if I watch more. Uh, but anyway, we really enjoyed it. Our our eight year old uh, enjoyed watching the you know watching the kids go through their their trials and tribulations. Confectory, that's the word. Confectory, that's it. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so that <laughs> yeah, I do a, not feel so guilty at all about too. that show, but I, I do, I do, uh, I love it so much. Right, your biggest miss. Um, biggest miss. So I have not seen any Our Flag Means Death. I've heard great things about it. Mm-hmm. That's also a Taika Waititi as well. As yeah, that's dogs. right. That's right. And I, you know, I, it's it's right up my alley. I love period. Oh, is this mm-hmm. the same person who does what we do in the shadows? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. so I got to watch all these now because I love so, what we do in the shadows. And and Taika Waititi also pr- pr- is a producer of Res Dogs. I don't think he... Is involved directed in, it okay? I don't think I he, think he was involved in it somehow, yeah. And then of course, he's done some uh, Star Wars, I think he's done some Mandalorian. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I have not seen any flag means, and I have not seen a single episode of Ahsoka. So, I <gasps> I just I, I don't know, I, I don't know, guys. I'm just I don't know. I've got a, I, I'm a little bit reluctant to get into the world of Ahsoka. Um, is that is that That's misplaced? Is, is that misplaced? <laughs> no, you're no, fine. it's not misplaced. It's uh, right. let's just say on the finale breakdown, we got some emails saying we brought the vibe down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Real like, I, I, honestly, enough. what I've been doing lately with these shows, like uh, Book of Boba Fett, I watched the first episode. No, not interested, and I just watched the season finale. And that was it. I was like, that's, that's, that's all I need. I, I kind of can get caught up just watching the first episode and the season finale. Did, did, the, did the same thing with Loki. Oh, as you say, Book of Boba Fett is largely uh, relegated to the, the dumpster fire yeah. uh, outback. So <laughs> I, I think it's, Ahsoka to me was seven great episodes of TV followed by a clunker. Mm. And, uh, yeah. But uh, you just mentioned Loki. Loki, I will say, I am not a Marvel guy. That's well known. I loved Loki. I thought it was excellent TV, just on its own. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like this this most recent season? Yeah, I really did. Okay. I liked it. All right. It ended really well. Okay. All right. I yeah. I feel like I'll probably try out Ahsoka at some point. Um, 
I, I think I needed a little bit of a break from Star Wars television. Sure. That's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious about your anticipated returns. Would you be saying these if you weren't podcasting about them? Mm. I think I would. Okay. I think I, House of the Dragon, for sure. I, I mean, Game of Thrones is easily my favorite show of all time. Mm. And, and I, and I did not, I did not enjoy House of the Dragon as much as my favorite show of all time, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I really liked it. I really liked House of the Dragon and it's actually, I've, I've rewatched several episodes, uh, and it's grown on me. Okay. And I think that, uh, hopefully not like the, uh, Stoneman disease. (laughs) Okay. Um, (laughs) I, just think that season two is going to be better. I okay. think that they're going to expand and the story gets more compelling. I think that there are more uh, elaborate and more complex uh, set pieces that happen season two. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then, of course, Severance is, is uh, you, you know my love for Severance. Mm-hmm. And, uh, You've been, yeah, you and Steve have been knocking it out with the Just uh, not a one. false move in the entire first season. Mm-hmm. Not, a, not a single dog episode, not, not one thing that kind of scratches. Mm-hmm, uh, that was kind of a miss. They didn't need that bottle episode or, you know, that character really annoys me. No, this, this is a show that had an almost perfect season one. So uh, I don't know, maybe I'm talking myself out of season two because how could you live up to season one? But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when we get to it. Well, you can't, I mean, we're the four of us are going to be covering it. And so that alone is going to be fun. So, you know. Oh, that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I just have faith in Ben Stiller that he's, he's an amazing filmmaker. And I, I just want to believe mm-hmm. that uh, that season two will pay off some of the questions raised season one. John, you were a big season one fan. I really liked Severance. I think it was my number two show last year. I think so. Yeah. I think that was that on my on mm-hmm. my rankings. Number mm-hmm. one was Andor. Yeah. Yeah. Andor was amazing for sure. It was. I, I rewatched Andor recently and uh, it holds up and is even better. Uh, you and you uh, came onto our podcast for the Andor season wrap, Anthony. That's right. And I sent that podcast. I sent that to Disney to try to get screeners for The Mandalorian or for Ahsoka <laughs> or something, and they were like, "Fuck off!" No, they just said no. <laughs> so I do. We know. Do we have a date for season two of Andor? Do we know anything? Yeah, they're they were filming in the UK. They had to stop because of both DGA and uh, actor issues. Even though the principal filming was in the UK, and I and they were halfway through. I think Diego Luna was out on the stump a little bit. They were doing some press interviews, press availability with him uh, while they were on a little break mid season filming. And then he went back in, and then right after that was the the DGA strike. Mm, and then I think mm. I, I I've heard something. I think they're back filming, and we'll see. We're not sure if it's going to hit this year or or, or next year. Okay. It all depends on on whether they can put it together and and if yeah. they'll um, have yeah. time to do a late season release. Okay. So. Well, I look forward to that too. Yeah. Anthony, thanks very much for coming on today, and thanks for um, you know being part of the the crew. And it's been a lot of fun having you and and Steve uh, in the mix, especially with the properly Howard stuff. That was a really fun season. I'm looking forward to whatever you guys cook up for your next season. And obviously, we've got House of the Dragon and Severance. So yeah, you're gonna have a lot. That's gonna be a lot for you, as well as the Bukalu, uh, the ongoing Bukalu stuff. So you're gonna be a, a busy podcaster. It will be, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll have to. Play oh, you with have the your draft. I mean, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and You've also got the draft going on. Yeah, yeah. House of the Dragon fantasy auction just recently. Thank yeah. you for being our auctioneer. I appreciate that was a lot that. of fun. So, and uh, thanks for inviting me on today. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Anthony. Marilyn. 
Thanks for being here for our year-end review of shows. Of course. How's your TV viewing been this year? How was your How was your year in TV? I'm only watching the things that are being covered by the different shows. Okay. <laughs> Particularly the ones that I'm participating in or, or extremely interested in <laughs> right. sending over lengthy comments about. <laughs> right. And you're not, cause you're not really a TV hobbyist as some of us are. No, I'm really not. Um, I haven't had a functioning TV since 1988 in the house. Um, uh-huh. What I have now is a television set that I hooked up to DVD VCR player. Yes, I'm that old. Um, but when I was teaching, there were some things, materials that I could only get on VCR. So I needed to have both, yeah, right. both things. And now I have a little magic box that, that Bob worked out for me very nicely that allows me to do streaming. And so that, oh, good. that so makes we're, it possible. We're baiting me, you into the TV watching sphere. <laughs> well, you know, you're not even giving me any more hours in the day. So <laughs> right now we're only taking more hours. We should right. do this project and we should do that project. And what about this book? And what about well, you know, movie? I was the one who pumped Mrs. Davis. So right. you know, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm right in there with you. <laughs> it's showing up on a lot of the uh, survey in uh, the community uh, surveys. It's showing up in a lot of different places. That so makes my heart glad. I'm we'll glad. see how the, we'll see how the, the, it actually ranks out if it's in a bigger miss category or if it's in a top three. But speaking of which we should probably jump onto that. Sure. Why don't we lead off with your third most favorite television show of 2023? That would be Loki. Oh, very yes. nice. It was, um, it was a delightful surprise. I wasn't expecting it to be as marvelous as it was. Uh-huh. Um, the first season drew me in because in the first two episodes, suddenly Loki, who we are so accustomed to seeing, full of power, authority, grandiosity, ego, etc., is utterly powerless. Mm-hmm. He cannot do anything. He is completely, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Who are these people? How can they possibly override Loki? What's going on here? I want to know more. So that was what really drew me in. I mean, having an ashtray full of infinity stones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. What a perfect it? metaphor for we have power over you and you can't do anything about it. Um, and everything you thought that was important is not really All of a that sudden, important. poof. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm not a big fan of the whole multiverse, multiple timeline sure. kind of stuff. So that, that kind of pulled it down for me. And I think sometimes, the first season in particular, there was a lot of stuff in the middle that it just seemed to go on too long for me. Right. And I think that was largely due to the fact that I didn't know the comics. And so when I started to hear Jean talking about them, I thought, okay, this is great. This is really helpful because now I understand the connections. I understand Mm -hmm. why there is an alligator Loki, you know? Right. Um, (laughs) Right, exactly. And, and... The fact that I, I I didn't have to listen to a podcast, I wanted to listen to the podcast, but the fact that I needed them in order to understand what was going on, that kind of dumped it down for me a little bit too. Got it. You know, okay. I, I shouldn't have to listen to two podcasts or read two books or whatever to understand what's going on here, at least in my opinion. Mushy middle first season, but the second season, again, they gave me the same stuff multiple times. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we watched Loki, you know, slip in and out of time five or six times. Right. Three would have done, right? Um, at least to me. It was fabulously done, well constructed. It was wonderfully conceived and all of that. So, all right, I guess, you know, give the creators their due and let them have fun and, you know, show what they can do. The spaghettification in different places was right. very elegantly done. It was. That was one of my favorite effects they did. It was very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the character developments, you know, the d- different people going in different directions and all that sort of thing um, drew me in. But overwhelmingly, it was Loki's arc. Yeah. Watching him go from somebody who stood in a square in Germany and ordered everybody to kneel to him to somebody who gave himself over. Right. Right to right. the tending and care of others. And the use of Yggdrasil was spectacularly beautiful and very moving. Yeah. Um, and it was, the character arc was really sublimely done. It was, it, was. Like, it really brought us around and I was not at all expecting 
where we landed. I know, John, you just finished up the season as well. Uh, yeah, I just watched it like a week ago, a week oh. before recording. So okay. I really liked it. I mean, I, I didn't expect it to place on my top 10, but it's on there. I won't tell yeah. David where it is. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, that's, it's that's on a secret. There. Right, because it, while we're recording these ahead of writing the second breakfast and the data analytics, we're going to be slipping these segments with all the Ishtari in between uh, mm -hmm. our, our rankings. And oh, so, fun. Yeah. Fun. No, that should be that good. Work, so. And I think I remember somebody at the podcast at some point saying something to the effect of, oh, well, if they make him into a good God at the end, I guess I suppose I'll go. But the questioning the actual arc that happened, but the way it happened mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. so beautifully crafted and conceived that I think whoever that was, I think was quite satisfied in the end. Right. Right. Because I think it, no matter how far you get from the original, you it, it really depends on how you got there, right? Is is if you could sell me on almost any character change as long <laughs> as you do it well and you sure, give it enough sure, space. And sure. I think that they gave it enough space here. Yeah. Yes, they did. Espe they especially because you had what was it, centuries later? So he's had he's had time <laughs> to uh <laughs> think about all this. Yeah, that was a little jazz hands, maybe, but still. I thought it was funny. I, I enjoyed it. Especially you know, they set it up. It was within the rules of their world. I was fine with it. <laughs> That's true. That's absolutely true. And only a god. And they kept making this point about Loki being a god. And only yes. a god could do that sort of centuries later time jump mm -hmm. thing. And you know what? I figured out three episodes earlier that only a god could do any of this. Right. And fun to see how initially Mobius asked Loki to. And Loki said, oh, no, I'm not doing this. Right. <laughs> and so there again, more character development, more yeah. arc eventually he comes to the realization, I have to do this. Right. And I am willing to do it. Yes. And, and that, that was, the, was the key. Shift that was right earned. There. That it was, was earned. really earned. Yeah. That was earned. Yep. Great. Yep. Good pick. All right. What's your number two? Number two is Mrs. Davis. Mm, How good. could I not? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Just extraordinary. <laughs> Unlike any television series I've ever seen, and granted, I don't watch as much as other people do, but a fabulously wacky, wonderful deeply moving, touching on themes that are really dear to my heart. It helped that I could understand them at a very deep, almost experiential level. Mm -hmm. And um, just the directions they went, very simple in terms of, of um, production and, and sets and all this kind of stuff, you know, that that was clearly uh, the lower end because it was very much about ideas. Mm -hmm. And the questions that we talked about in, in the pod that we did, uh, who do you put your faith in? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't remember them all now. I should have made better notes, but yeah, unlike anything I've ever seen, I was so disappointed. It just didn't seem to get the attention of the critics that much, although it did get honorable mention on the New York times best TV shows of, of 2023. So I was pleased to see it there. Yeah. When we covered this, Marilyn, I, I mean, I was enamored with the show, but I was thinking actually of David's ranking as we were covering it because I was like, <laughs> he he loves his industry score. Like, what does it do for the industry? Sure. That that's like this show. Like this show, I think pushes boundaries more than any show I've seen. I in agree. Years. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And bringing in so many ancient concepts and tropes. You know, right. we were talking about the Eleusinian mysteries and and. Um, then the bro cave and the Excalibur. And I mean, it just, it. Yeah. It's got everything. It's a show it about does. everything and nothing. And it's great. Sounds like it's a perfect Lorehound show. It really is. We should have done it, but we didn't know. We right. didn't well, know it was going to be great going in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, the Marilyn first two episodes. Us, but, uh, we didn't <laughs> I tried. I tried. I tried. I <laughs> tried. I was still new to you guys. So that's okay. Cool. Good. All right. And uh, here we go. And your number one pick for 2023. Foundation. Wow. Very cool. Absolutely. Very nice. Absolutely. Phenomenal. To, you want to see two flip sides of the same coin, the production values, the sets, mm -hmm. the special effects, the um, whatever the other term is for, you know, we don't have any jazz hands going on here. The effects are what they are. Not right, right. Practical. Practical. Yeah. I knew yeah. it was, yeah, practical effects. Um, the music, of course, Bear McCreary. But I loved the way they took Asimov's original conception mm -hmm. and expanded on it. Right. The cloning of the Cleons was brilliant. It's been a really great device. Absolutely fantastic way 
of yeah. covering hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of history. Yeah. His major points were all present. They were somewhat muted sometimes. I wish they could have made more of the the line about, you know, violence is the last resort of the incompetent and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. things like that. I didn't mind, you know, the gender switching and, I mean, yeah, who cares about that sort of thing, right? right? Tell a story. Unless, unless there is a story-based reason for that. Right, right. Um, but, and then make it clear. Acting was superb. Lee mm-hmm. Pace. <laughs> Lee Pace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the one who was Thranduil. Although, yes. <laughs> interestingly enough, I mean, I, I, I didn't really like Thranduil all that much. He was kind of a jerk. He really was. And, and a little slimy almost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you could see the regality of him. Right. And those were the seeds which we saw flourish and blossom into flower in, in this series where he just tore up the scenery and chewed it to pieces and spat it out again. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he was, he's such a highlight. He really was phenomenal. Um, the the changes of things like having two Harrys and having the vaults and, and they worked. They really worked. And mm-hmm. you know me, I'm usually pretty stern with, with, you know, book to uh, visual adaptations. Right. On if, the shippy test. If, if they're tearing up the lore, the shippy test. Exactly. Yeah. Wait, exactly. and who is it, John? I keep always forgetting. Is it Sanderson or is it uh, Rafe Judkin? Who is it? The, the inspiration adaptation. That's Brandon Sanderson. It was Sanderson. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we've got the Shippy test. We've got the Sanderson test, mm-hmm. and then John just minted the uh, Pekila <laughs> test. I'm so honored. Which is the is the violence more or less uh, than the Rings of Power? Rings of Power. Season. So. During which I do shut my eyes sometimes. So well, but that's your. I, I consider <laughs> that your max. You know. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. The power okay. is your max. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. The, I was watching Fargo, and I was like, Marilyn would hate this. I, just, I was just watching. <laughs> yeah, the I got that impression. <laughs> I got that impression, which is too bad because Minnesota. Oh, right. it's a great show, and it's got You'd a love lot the plot. of. Yeah, you would really love you the plot, but there plot. is a lot of violence. If we do a yeah, sure. tequila cut, we could, uh, you know, <laughs> take those, those bits out. Just get Noah Hawley and say, listen, we've got Marilyn yeah. Arpequila here. That's right. You got to do a cut <laughs> just for her. Well, my parents were born and raised there, so Fair lots enough. of connections. Yeah, you would vibe a lot. You, and you w- would like it. It's all about Minnesota nice. It's That's that's the concept he's breaking down. Sure, In this well, season, yeah. From the outside, that's what it looks like. But if you know anything about the inside... It's it's a little bit like in Quakers, they have this saying that they say, um, I have a concern in the course of something <laughs> that's being proposed for business. And what they mean is over my dead body. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what he's doing in the season is he's saying, well, if you took off, if you scraped off the superficial niceness on top, what's underneath? What do you mm-hmm. see underneath there? Sure. It's, it's one of many things that he's playing with, but he's definitely sure. playing with that. Well, it will just have to pass me by, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's all but right. That leaves me more time for things like foundation. You can always um, listen to the pod. We don't hurt each other on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. actually, I, I've done that with one or two shows that I know I'm never going to watch, but I'd be curious to know what they were about and what you guys thought about. I, yeah. I, I actually think you it would works. really like our pod on that because we did a lot of like patriarchy things. Yeah, exactly. Not, right. not that we were enforcing the patriarchy that we were discussing. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I, I, I heard the, yeah. the subtext of what you were saying there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, we, and in fact, we do a sort of more uh, analysis of the story as opposed to the scene by scene plot by, you know, plot point right. by plot point. We, right. we talk in a much right. more meta way. Right. So, right. all right. Well, that's a, a really good little list. And your bonus questions, what was your quote unquote Guilty pleasure, something that you would watch but uh, not ever put on a ranking. <laughs> it is quite appropriately the librarians. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know if anybody knows. No, about I don't. This I'm now, not familiar it, with the title. It you came out it, a bunch of years about. ago. I talked about it some. Um, it um, it's uneven. Okay, but in its early early inception, I mean, it, it King Arthur. You know, the first season was pretty much all about King Arthur mm-hmm. and. Uh, the concept of a library. And of course it just warms the cockles of my librarian's heart when the characters who are workers in this magic library, who are protecting the world from magical artifacts being misused or destroyed or abused or whatever. And there's some kind of wacky situation going on and they have doors that open from where their headquarters is to wherever it is they need to go. And they step through and they walk down the street where the chaos is going on. And they look for the authorities and say, hi, we're here to help. And they'll say, who are you? And they'll say, well, we're the librarians. Uh, <laughs> is one of them an orangutan? No, no. Different universe, John. <laughs> I'm doing one, a Discworld reference, David. Oh, okay. Yes, got it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, it sounds like a good D- uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, setup for a game as well. To Could some degree, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's it's um, purely comedy. Sometimes there's there's a bit of horror elected. Got there's it. continuity between seasons a little bit, but it's mostly sort of a seasonal chunk of stories. And, right. Uh, if you know the sort of stuff, it's fun to kind of look, you know, name the Easter eggs and guess about what might happen and so on. And some, you know, some good people in it. But um, cool, yeah. All right. And what is your biggest miss for the year? My biggest miss is Wheel of Time because mm. I have only just, I finished reading the first book and I haven't started watching the first season yet. And I just didn't have the time to you yeah. know, pu- push through one or the other. It sounds like it's better than it was in the first season from the oh, little bits much and pieces better. I'm hearing. Much better the so, second season. Yep. I can look forward to seeing it eventually. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think the Pukila test. Who knows uh, when, but. We'll definitely check in because there's a couple of scenes that you should just skip. But uh, I think overall, I think you'd be fine with most of it. Do you think yeah. it's worse than Rings of Power? I think it's about the same. There's one scene in particular that is in season th- okay I that, that, that season two yeah. that shocked the very early on that really shocked me otherwise like the a lot of the fighting later on it's just like everybody was coming through fighting kind of stuff you know they're just <laughs> you know it's it's uh it's pretty relaxed fantasy uh you know swords and and sandals kind of stuff yeah yeah i will say well, what I-, I love that that show does compare to game of thrones is the violence always means something it's mm-hmm. never just senseless it's never just yeah. out of nowhere right. it's always there for a reason Right. And well, I think Fargo does that too. It's just more gruesome. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's no surprise to anybody that I don't watch Game of Thrones. Yep. What I did was fun though. I did the the final season every Monday. The New York Times would do a quick summary and review of what happened mm-hmm. and responses and things. So I kind of feel like I saw the eighth final <laughs> season. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> without actually but having any images. you suffered along with all of us. Right. Without having any images, I had to scrape off the back of my eyeballs right, afterwards. Right, you right, know? right. So, well, when, if you fun. get around to watching season one or two of Wheel of Time, you know, I'm, you've got Alicia and John here to clue you in of when to skip and, and yeah. where to be careful. So Great. Alicia probably has the episodes memorized, so I'd ask her. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. I did watch the first episode. So does season one. Okay. And Honestly, that's probably the most violent the show ever is. Yeah, well, that's really, interesting really because is. that was what said, no, I didn't really, I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most over the top with the Trollocs and all of yeah. that kind of stuff. Otherwise, it's a well, lot of Well, and the guy's wife, wife getting yeah. killed. And yeah, yeah. It didn't happen in the book. And I don't yeah, think it yeah. ever gets to that level again. Oh, no, good. and even, yeah, just just the one, there's one brief scene in, in season two that's shocking. And then otherwise, it's pretty standard. Well, you yeah. can tell me how many minutes in that is when and whenever I get there. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Five years from now, maybe. That's right. <laughs> uh, okay. And what is your biggest, um, God, my brain just. Anticipated show. Thank you. <laughs> my brain just sort of <laughs> mushed out there. Too many holiday the movies. I know yeah, the feeling. The show you're most anticipating. Well, it might not surprise you to know that my most anticipated is the second season of Rings of Power. Oh, uh, there we go. I am just hoping, mm. I'm hoping that they will mend their three egregious flaws. And right. um, I'm very curious. To see how well they, yeah, see what they've to. see to. what's what's coming next. What are they going to do, you know, with the things that they have already done for better and for worse? Mm-hmm. And, of course, I have a personal reason for wanting to see it, as you guys both know. Yeah. Given the major project that's coming along in my Right, life. right. Which, technically speaking, we're about to record something for that. So uh, Right. <laughs> Stay yes, tuned. We're going to have an, an announcement fans. shortly. That's right. <laughs> All Very 12 cool. of you. Oh, no. stop. People in our reviews say that they love you. So just. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely true. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you, folks. So, thank you, listeners. Well, thank you for uh, joining us on this fun journey. It's fun to have you as uh, one of our quote unquote Istari. And we look forward to a good 2024. It should be great. <clears throat> and I'm delighted to be along with you for the ride. Anna Claus, welcome to the Lorehounds. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? We're we're good. Uh, thanks for hopping in on this sort of last minute thing. I know this might have uh, been a little bit of a surprise, but we, you and I, actually know each other personally, and uh, along with our spouses and uh, kids, a little bit. And my wife mentioned that you had this Substack where you write these takedowns of holiday rom com things, and John 
I don't know, John, what, how do, how would you describe your relationship to the holiday rom-com genre? I, I have like a set of five or six that are always just on at some point during the holidays with my wife. Mm-hmm. We like watching them and laughing at them and just kind of enjoying them for what they are. You know, they're, mm-hmm. they're silly. They're fun. They're not meant to be great movies. And we just have a good time. We decorate the tree and we watch a Christmas Prince or whatever else we're going to watch. You've got a big sub stack full of, uh, of takedowns of, of the holiday <laughs> rom-com. How did you get around to doing that? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I, um, something that happened. Yeah, I I don't know. I like watched one and I posted about it on Facebook and mm-hmm. people thought it was funny. And so like, you know, every time I watched one, I'd just post like a silly little review on Facebook and somebody was like, you should turn these into a sub stack. And so I did. And then it became this like... Uh, thing that I do every holiday season, kind of starting after after um, Halloween, I'll just start watching Christmas rom-coms like in droves uh, so that I can snarkily review them. And I don't know why, I don't know how this became my thing, um, but it is now my thing. It's a Christmas miracle. It's, it's super fun Christmas though. Miracle. It's a, uh, what, what a delight. Does your spouse uh, enjoy watching them as well or? Oh no, he doesn't watch them with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he walks into the room, like sees the red and green on the screen, rolls his eyes and walks out. <laughs> that's an appropriate response, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised that's what I'm not doing, but right. I'm, I'm sitting there watching them like under a fuzzy blanket. So how many have you done so far? Oh, Roughly. That's, that's a good question. It's a um, lot. I, 25 maybe. Okay. Something like that. Do you, do you kind of plan it or do you just dredge up whatever's there and then write two or three of these a season? Oh, um, no, I've only been doing it for a couple of years. And okay. so. Wow. Um, so you've caught up. I've caught up. Yeah. I Unfortunately, between Netflix and Hallmark and Lifetime, there are about 100 new Christmas rom-coms every season. <laughs> uh, so there's no way I can possibly watch them all. Um so I don't try. I just will go to one of those networks and pick one that looks like the thing that I want to watch in that moment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, not that there is even like a huge amount of variety. Like they're all the same movie. So, you know, it's like if I want like a small town in Vermont or if I want somebody who is royalty or if I want um, – that's that's actually kind of it. There's small towns <laughs> and there's royalty. Can I ask you, when did Netflix become the – epicenter of Christmas on streaming? Um, I believe that it uh, it started with the Princess Switch, I want to say, in like 2016. Um, I think that was their first like, oh, hey, people love these and we could make money mm-hmm. and not really have to spend much money. Um, and so they they still don't do them in the volume that Hallmark and Lifetime do. Um, but they, you know, it's like a, a few more sneak in every year. Yeah. And, and what my favorite thing is about these Netflix movies is that they will force feed you as many Vanessa Hudgens as they can. So many Vanessa Hudgens. There's three within one movie. It's amazing. And then there's another one, the, the night one where, uh, she falls in love with a knight who time travels, and there's so many awful, awful, wonderful movies on this service. And so my wife and I will watch all of the Vanessa Hudgens movies because why not? Yeah, I, I actually did review um, the first two in that series, and the second one, I just like wrote an imagined scene between like the producers and the writers, <laughs> being like, "Well, what's better than Vanessa Hudgens playing two princesses?" How about Vanessa Hudgens playing three princesses? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so bad. It's so yes. good, though. The third it's- one is equally as bad and has an amazing scene where Vanessa Hudgens has to do one of those like cartwheels through lasers. Yes. And it's just it's everything Christmas is about. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't spend Christmas doing cartwheels through lasers? Exactly. Exactly. Fabulous. So we usually pick for a, a movie for our Patreon subscribers. And John and I go back and forth. I, I throw some what we call old man movies at him, stuff from the 60s and 70s and 
John will pick up you know things from the 90s and the 2000s and throw it back at me. And so for Christmas, we obviously have to do a Christmas themed one. So he picked three. Do you remember what your picks were, John? I could look it up. It on was the it was the starters for all three of the the major Vanessa Hudgen verse. It was uh, <laughs> the integrated IP universe. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Hudgen verse. Although actually one of them doesn't have her. It's a Christmas Prince, which does not have her, although it does connect later. This couple goes to the wedding of Vanessa Hudgens in another movie. Anyway, um, so Vanessa Hudgens is in The Princess Witch, which, which was the second one. And then the third one is the Lindsay Lohan movie that we're talking about tonight, Falling for, Falling Christmas. for Christmas. So normally we put a post up on our Patreon uh, page and our subscribers can vote on it. And usually there's a fair bit of conversation and back and forth on our Discord and chats on the on the post. And we get, you know, 20, 30 people voting on it and, and it's lively and it's a, kind of a fun thing. This got eight votes and it was a tie between the Princess Switch and Falling for Christmas. Wow. And I had to, I, I, I didn't have to, but I did. I went online and I um, got one of these um, spin the wheel kind of things where you can put in your own uh, criteria. And uh, I hit spin and I, I put a little gif of it on the um, um, website on our discord and it was falling for Christmas. And I have to say it is a truly awful movie. It sure is. But only by the standards of other regular movies, by <laughs> right. the standards true. of a Christmas rom-com, it's actually pretty good. Do you think? Okay, so let's <laughs> let's start walking through it. Um, so this was supposed to be like a Lindsay Lohan reboot. Yeah, this this is a Lindsay Lohan vehicle. Uh -huh. This this is, um, and and Christmas rom coms do this a lot. They'll sort of like go dredge up somebody you haven't thought about in a decade and give them a starring role because you know then people who you know had actors they loved a decade ago are like, oh yeah, I love that actor. Mm -hmm. What happened to them? I will totally watch this Christmas rom-com. Um, so this was like sort of a re-emergence into the spotlight for her. Um, and it's just the whole movie is just Lindsay Lohan kind of floofing around being Lindsay Lohan. Like yep. it, is, it is very much a vehicle for her. She is not a good actor. <laughs> well, just, I don't know if I'd say that though, because watch Mean Girls, and that's a great movie, and, that, okay. and she's great in that. But uh, you know, but that was back that, in the day. That was yeah, quite but a she while hasn't ago. acted in twenty years, right? Exactly, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, again, like it's it is bad acting by uh, normal movie standards, right? Sorry, but, you know, I'm we have judging to, it. We have to unfairly. grade on a curve here. Okay, and okay. you know, on on the the Christmas rom com curve, that's not so bad. So the the setup for this movie, I guess, is that she is the daughter of a guy who is a rich, who runs and owns a, a rich, fancy lodge, which is next to the dumpy, down at the heels, but full of heart lodge, um, ski lodge and some mythical, um, I don't know, is this supposed to be in the Rocky Mountains or? It never says. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. it's just ski lodgeville. And so this is an amnesia love story. So she gets proposed to by her influencer boyfriend. She falls down a cliff. Oh, I'm spoiling this thing. Yes. Yes, we are. Uh, so if you, the plot you know, doesn't matter, folks. It doesn't matter. All right. She hits her head. She gets amnesia. She, of course, then falls in love with uh, the uh, uh, warm and fuzzy guy who's running the, the lodge next door. Who, who and, by the way, the movie will not let you forget has a dead wife. <laughs> just every three minutes That's reminds right. you, oh, my wife is dead. And and just hits you over the head with it until you can't forget it. I mean, we could go on all day about the woman always dies trope and how problematic that is in media generally, but that's a big one in, in Christmas nonsense movies, right? Oh yeah, no, there's there's almost always um Usually it's a widower, and mm -hmm. usually he has what I call the same eight-year-old girl who's in every Christmas rom-com. Oh, her um, curls went on for days in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And, it's you know, she's always played by a different actress, but they always have the exact same personality, and mm -hmm. they're, like, extremely positive and very well-adjusted for somebody, you know, grieving their mother's death. Mm -hmm. um, and all they want is for dad to, you know, to settle down with a, with a new wife and live happily ever after. And this one has the mother-in-law. 
as well. Yes, which, who gives which is permission. unusual. There's okay. there's not always a mother in law, but in in this case, um, yeah, grandma is very much around, and um, they own the ski lodge, um, which is just you know funny because they're Latino and. There are not a lot of Latino owned ski lodges um, in anywhere that I know of, but maybe South America, um, right. <laughs> but not not in the United States. Not so in that the United was, States. That was an interesting choice. That was a brave choice for them. Right. And then there were some, um, uh, the mayor and uh, I think one of the Christmas village vendors were African American, which is trying to lend some credibility to. She has to. She kind of vouches for the main character, who's blonde and tall and hunky, and he's validated by uh, these people of color uh, for being such a good guy and having a warm heart and a generous spirit. Yes, which makes up for his total lack of personality. <laughs> <laughs> and and the mother in law just going, "Won't you please sleep with my son in law?" Just right. the the whole movie. It's a little creepy. It is creepy. She's very pushy about it. Yes. So I th- one of the things I thought that was it was really interesting was this is an amnesia love story, right? She gets bonked in the head. She doesn't know who she is. It takes a while for them to figure it out. And when then they do, of course, there's a big dramatic reveal. But it's also um, uh, uh, it's a wonderful life story as well. Because the lodge is failing and they have to um, get the community support to keep the lodge alive. And of course, Lindsay Lohan's amnesiatic character is the one who instigates the coming together of supporting this wonderful lodge that has been a part of so many people's lives. Yes. I have to admit, I have not seen It's a Wonderful Life uh, or Miracle on 34th Street. I, I don't do classic Christmas movies. Okay. I only do recent, terrible, made-for-TV Christmas <laughs> rom-coms. It. Well, okay, th- this is It's a Wonderful Life minus all of the time trip or the fantasy tripping that George does, the the sort of angel that takes him around to the different realities that if he hadn't been around would have come to transpire. And so he can see the uh, the true effect of his life and how many people that he's affected. But the idea that at the end, everyone comes together to prop his business up because he's given them so much, it's now the community's turn to repay the favor to him. Which is not really how real estate works, but we'll let that slide. <laughs> it's true, but it's also a it's it's also a um, a Christmas magic movie because there's a creepy old guy with a big white beard who twinkles his nose and something magical happens. Yep, that is uh, that's the same creepy old guy who's in every Christmas rom com, and and that's another thing that you'll find a lot. There is often. Some guy who's like low key Santa Claus, <laughs> like they never spell it out. You know, he's not he's not wearing like the Santa hat. He's not necessarily in a sleigh, but like there's always some old dude with a white beard wandering around, really kind of getting into people's personal business. And nobody's like, hey, this is weird and uncomfortable. And maybe you're an identity thief They're You know, they're just like, yes strange old man, let me tell you about my quest for love and the magic of Christmas. And <laughs> he'll sort of like nod sagely and twinkle at them. And then like, sometimes there'll be like a little sound effect, like meep, 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 and, like some little, you know, bad movie sparkles. Uh, and then low key Christmas magic happens. And it's it's shocking how often this happens in these movies. This This guy is pretty, pretty everywhere. Okay. <laughs> He's- nobody is scared. This um, and this actor is really for this particular movie is very distinctive. He's huge and um, kind of, kind of. I don't know. He had a weird vibe to him. I don't know if I'd want him winking at me. And then yeah. he just gives a sleigh to Jake. Jake, the main character. He, he you know, he, he, it's the big moment where he has to go chase down the love of his life and tell her how he really feels. And the ho- the horse Baltazar. Of, like what what is that name <laughs> but they they bring up a sleigh that is like this pristine beautiful thing and he charges across town uh riding this thing to confront um you know his the love of his life that he's gonna you know confess to her 
how he truly feels. It's important that it's a new sleigh because his previous sleigh was sort of breaking down. Right. Um, there's there's a scene where he takes um, some so, some of the few guests staying in his lodge on a sleigh ride, uh, and a, like a part falls off right before they start. And like I don't I don't know if the people who wrote this understand that like it's not it's not like a car, you know? Like it's not like if there's like lots of little bits that piece you of need to make it go. Um so, you know, he gets this magical upgraded sleigh at the end um so that he doesn't have to fix his old one. Yeah, the the sleigh there's there are a lot of good like chase scenes that aren't on in cars in this movie. Um there's a lot of ski chasing there's a snow there's a big ski ski chase scene at the very beginning where jake is trying to impress the owner of the big fancy lodge so that he would get him well get some investment dollars into his failing lodge and they do this like full-on warren miller ski chase down the hill it was uh they threw a bunch of money at that yeah, and I think honestly, a lot of these chase scenes in this movie, or the snowmobile scene where they're going quickly on a snowmobile through the woods, I think that's just them kind of flexing that they had a higher budget uh, than most of these <laughs> movies have. Yeah, like oh look, we can we can film motion outdoors <laughs> <laughs> because we got Lindsay Lohan. We got to spice it up a little bit. Yes. Is there always a a chase scene where the two uh, loves have to sort of realize that they're missing each other and and then somehow rush into each other's arms? There is not. Sometimes, Sometimes somebody has to get somewhere to confront the love. But again, like these are not high budget movies. So usually what happens is they just show up. The you know, they, the airport, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Like she's yeah. usually it's like she's gone to get on the plane to go to the city to take the high powered job. Uh, and everybody's sad and he goes back to the Christmas tree factory and then she just sort of like appears there. Okay. Right. You just cut yeah. scene and, and there they are. Yeah. So so this this sleigh really was a flex. This this showing the race, which like he could have just taken a car <laughs> and gotten there faster. It's, it's the mountains. Like, yes, it's snowing. People have four wheel drive, but you know, what fun is that? One of the things I did notice was that in this one, one shot of the sleigh going with the horses, with the horse, you could see the tracks from a previous take uh, in the snow. So they didn't actually have the budget to fluff the snow back to like making it look like it was a, uh, uh, that it hadn't happened before. So oh, there the, was the snow fluffer got cut from the budget. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I think Lindsay Lohan's budget was a little, she wanted a little too much cake. And so, yeah. They I, I actually, one fun uh, Hallmark rom-com fact that I know is that each budget, it, each film has a $50,000 budget for fake snow. $50,000 for yes. fake snow. Crazy. Yes, of of the $2 million that they spend to make the movie, 50,000 of it goes to fake snow and another 50 goes to like the writers. Wonder what they're doing for fake snow these days. I thought it was like torn plastic that when it stretches it turns white. It's apparently like a mix of things. It's okay. like plastic and paper and some goo and stuff. Depends on what kind of snow you want, I guess. I guess there's different mixtures. Well, it's always fluffy. Okay. Always. Like they're not going to have like wet, sad snow in a, in a happy Christmas movie. <laughs> it's true. They're not going to have a winter snow, remix. Right? <laughs> the, I, I thought in this movie, the, the ending montage of the memories of them together was a really great way to buff out the, the total minutes of the movie, just mm. to fill in a good two or we three love it. Filler, yeah. you know, filler minutes. So, and, and I just couldn't understand who the hell has a, cr- a, a press conference on Christmas morning. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, people in Christmas rom-coms. Um, and this this yeah. is another thing that, that happens a lot in this world that doesn't happen in the regular world is you can draw a crowd on like a holiday that people traditionally spend with their families. You can, you can get everybody to like leave their Christmas tree and their coffee and come out to your Christmas festival or your fundraiser or your marriage proposal. Uh, people are going to show up for it. Amazing. That's a great point. I never thought about that. Like the princess switch, they have like a, a baking competition on Christmas day that everyone's just got to go to. 
Yeah. You just you just can't miss it. There's there's this plot line in like the princess uh the Christmas Prince 3 where they're like we have to sign our contract, our treaty before it expires on Christmas or we'll be at war. <laughs> and and it's just like there's so many dumb ideas regarding Christmas in these movies and I love it. A lot of travel is supposed to happen on Christmas. A lot of times you know, she if if the thing doesn't happen to keep her in the small town, she is going to hop a plane to back to the big city on Christmas Day. A lot of lot of travel happening yeah. on this traditionally very um homebound day. Yeah, like you're going to go accept your big corporate job on Christmas Day. Are they open? Right. <laughs> I feel like that's the one day they're probably not open. Like, I, you know, there's many, many high power corporate jobs where you might be working on New Year's Day or Eve or something. Fine. But like Christmas Day, I don't think they're open. Yeah. Like the 7-Eleven's not open. Like, I, yeah, you know, yeah. Corporation Inc. is probably also not going to be open. <laughs> Are all these <clears throat> movies pretty hetero- heteronormative? Um, not this um, one. Yeah, well, um, there is a def- there's George definitely has a, a different agenda going on here. The uh, no, there's the there's a weird boyfriend. gay subplot right at the end of this yes. one. I think it started earlier with the guy in the cabin in the woods. Yes, I totally thought that they were going to hook up. Oh, Ralph, Ralph, there I, was definitely tension there. Yeah, I mean, time. there was like a a kiss. Like he doesn't he like grab Ralph's face and just plant a big one on him. But it's very much like. And I save you saved my life kiss, not a like I want to slip you some tongue kiss. I didn't get that <laughs> subtext at all, but now now I'm rethinking everything. There there's a some scenes where he's in the cabin and when they're on their hike and things like that, where it was I really thought they were gonna go for it. That, huh. that, that that's where it was gonna end up. But then to just take the personal assistant at the end, oh you'll do. Come on, jump in the back of the Hummer. Yeah, that's like I I couldn't tell if he was like poaching him or propositioning him. I think it was pretty clearly propositioned. That's to me. I don't know, John, did you what did you read on that? Oh, I buy it. Yeah. I buy this chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they they probably had more chemistry than anyone else in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think you Oh my yeah, god, he taught right. me how to do chores and so I'm in love with him. Also, yeah. I know this town well enough after two days to organize a whole meeting greet where everyone's going to shower this lodge with money. I mean, she handed out flyers. It's true. <laughs> like Everyone that, knows know. if you hand out a flyer, people take it with joy. And yes, listen people to love Obama. flyers. <laughs> Fabulous. Anything else that we should uh, think about when we are thinking about this movie? Any other interesting tidbits or under the scene? I I think we may have covered all of the really good stuff. Okay. You know, there's there's a little dose of holiday magic. There's the third generation ski lodge. Oh, one fun tidbit is um the so the the Belmont, which is the very fancy hotel owned by And they by- kept showing the pool that was in the glassed in deck. That was a constant drone shot. Yes. So that and the little rundown ski lodge, um, mm-hmm. the, the North Star Lodge uh, that Jake runs, those are actually the same resort. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> physically. Yes, they're physically part of the same resort, which is the That's funny. Goldener Hirsch um, in Park City, Utah. Okay. And they, you know, they just, they have like a very modern part, which is the hot tub part. And then they have like a rustic Austrian inn situation. <laughs> so does it cost more to stay in the rustic Austrian inn? They didn't have prices on their website because I did go look. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I I end up looking at a lot of sort of tourism porn after watching these things. Um, mm-hmm. There was a good one that was shot at the Biltmore, which I was like, is this a real place? This is a real place. Oh, you I can I lived near there. there. Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Which which is beautiful. So I think, you know, a, a lot of times like they get a location that is a hotel and then the hotel gets bragging rights that they were in the movie, which should bring people in. Yeah. In this case, uh, the North Star and the Belmont are the same property, except for the exterior of the North Star Lodge, which was shot like 20 miles away at a different inn. Wow, so this was actually a big production. 
Yeah. 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 They could afford two locations. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Do you have any final recommendations for a couple of really top tier holiday rom-coms that tick a lot of the uh, archetypes and uh, tropes that we would find in this genre? There is a hilarious one called A Christmas Movie Christmas. Okay. That is itself a, a takedown of Christmas rom-coms. Um, the concept is there's two sisters. They live in the city. One of them hates Christmas movies. One of them loves Christmas movies. They fall asleep on Christmas Eve. You know, low-key Christmas magic happens, and they wake up in a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds a little <laughs> bit like the Brigadoon that was on Apple TV. There was yes, a, yeah. Schmigadoon, yeah, it is, Schmigadoon, it is thank Schmigadoon you, Schmigadoon. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, um, not not. I can't remember. There might have actually even been a musical number. That's another fun thing about these. A lot of them are like they want to be a musical, but they can't afford a whole slate of original songs. So they have one or two original songs, one like sort of little dance number where they step around each other. It's very cute. But yeah, if you want. All the stuff that is also self-aware of all the stuff, I, I highly recommend a Christmas movie, Christmas. That's amazing. Anna Claus, thank you so very much for swinging by. This was a lot of fun to talk to you. And uh, hopefully we can talk to you more in the future around uh, the next holidays. Where can people find you? How do they find the Substack? Uh, it is annaclaus.substack.com. That's Easy as, I, as it is. I think. <laughs> you think? Okay. Check. <laughs> we'll put a link in the show notes for the episode. So. Oh my goodness. Uh, yes, it is Anna Claus with two N's. Perfect. All one word. Dot substack. Dot com. Yes, I know the URL of my own site. Well, I'm I'm excited to uh, check it out more. And thank you so much for being with us. It's been a really fun time chatting with you about Lindsay Lohan getting bonked in the head. <laughs> and uh, hope you hope we can come back next year. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. This was so much fun. I love talking about Lindsay Lohan getting bonked in the head. It's my favorite. <laughs> A great way to end our, our Christmas. All right, Anna, thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care. 